Yeah, that's what the Hello game everyone and welcome to the Immortal Gates of Pyre Break of the Game Weekly. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, joined this week by ZK once again. How's it going, ZK? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Looking forward to some 2v2 action, man. It's gonna be great. Uh, we'll have a lot of action today. That we have not had any 2v2 games in the last couple weeks, which exactly. is exciting. So yeah. this week we didn't have a lot of people sign up. We are going to be instead doing a best of seven show match. Having Pigeon Wretch and Santa Claus go up against Waijizu and Drago. Drago That's have good. not seen in a while, but Zoo was in last week's tournament and didn't do too badly. They got, I mean, he, he didn't, got the didn't prize money. Top eight. Yeah, oh, he got the yes. He got into the prize money, man. He's a he's a successful deer, along with Santa as well. So we have two people that gone into the money. We have Drago who didn't feel like participating, but you know, Drago's more of a 2v2 guy anyway, so he's not the, the biggest fan of 1v1, so it's nice to have him back as well just for that. Uh, always been a decent competitor as well. Always been a really weird, wild one too. They've just, they have a habit of doing everything as weirdly as possible, like building expansions in weird spots and going for novel strategies for unit usage. Like everything's just with them is weird. Also true of Santa though. Oh, yeah. So both both teams have a player who's relatively normal and another player who is just wild. Well, you say that, but Zoo last weekend was a, a very, a very, very fond of proxies oh, in general. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right. Zoo was playing a very cheesy build or cheesy strategy. To be fair, though, when I have played him like on the side, he, he he goes for macros way. He likes different things, but then he said, okay, I'm going to the tournament. I'm going to have strategies prepped up. And people don't expect those proxies, so I'll find the right spots for him. So really just a very prepared player. And... I mean, it got him to top eight. We can't, uh, we can't complain about results. Well, it's hopefully it doesn't take too long. I mean, we can't complain about results. I'm a little bit, I I'm curious how long it's going to take. But then that was one v one. It's a little harder to break through an Orzum in one v one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Two v two. You two v two cannot hide behind the towers as long. Yeah, no. So. Well, especially on this map, Lost Province, at least, even if you put towers, at least to the second path, you know, you can go into the back door and attack his main or something. You're right, you're right. Pigeon and Santa could break the rocks and just, like, break around, get around and just do much damage, and not a whole lot that Zoo could do about it. We do, we are seeing free Ajari in one or Zoom, so Ooh. I'm pretty happy about this. We're seeing more and more Ajari play than we used to. It used to be much more, uh, you know, much more uh, Orzum focus, but now, since the last patch, Ajari's been making a big comeback. I think Ajari might... I'm, I'm curious how this is going to work out, if we're going to only see Ajari today or some Orzum. I, like, I've noticed a lot of players have been making heavy use of Heaven's Aegis, because it's... If your units don't die, then you get a ton of value. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if they like, can always do the damage, man, there's nothing the other one can do. It's like, oh, I do damage, you do nothing, ha. Huh. And that's what I'm a little worried about. We, I mean, we've got... Well, I mean, Pigeon and Santa both going for Ajari. Both going for very early tech. And okay. They have a plan. Expansion as well. We, at the same time, Zo, Ezu, and Drago with a quick double Legion haul. So they want blood right away. So judging by this, Zoo and Drago... I... Zoo and Drago want to get some early hits. They can, I, I, if they can get giving, rid of, okay, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm giving the like a small lead to to Team Ice right now. You know, having the tech versus the expansion, like you have tech and the stuff. Like the opponent's only gonna have a, a bit faster units, but you're still gonna have very quick units with the tech going after. So, and yeah, you can see the sign right away. Santa says, "Let's attack this place. They won't stand a chance." <laughs> right. I I do think that if Zoo and Drago can get early pyre off this and then leverage that in order to get some early game wins then they can deal with the tech disadvantage for the first few minutes oh definitely no exactly it's always like there, there's some there's some four and against right you got the four of oh i'm gonna get my faster stuff so i can get to the to the pyre a bit faster and hopefully get and they will they will right yeah, here especially with sand and going for the sulfandry proxy as, as well they sand and er, zoo and drago they've got to get this done quick Legion of Proxy for them as well. It's, it's, okay, it's do or die for them. Oh, yeah. Moving right in. Yeah, well, there's no expansion, right? What else are you going to do? You're going to, you, they're probably going to go into the main, but then the Soul Foundry is out for Santa, and the Soul Foundry Absolvers are so powerful they can get in position, but here comes the fight already. And so far, Zoo and Drago keeping Pigeon and Santa outside of their own base. It's all smallest round coming in here from, from Zoo. 
Drago's reinforcements have arrived, continuing to push in with Zoo's proxy reinforcements, and the main base is completely vulnerable. Pigeon and Xana have nothing to defend it, as Drago and Zoo continuing their proxies, also opening up the side ramp just to give themselves a little bit more room to get in there. Will it matter is a big question, as with the units coming in so far, Zoo and Drago have no meaningful resistance. And the, the mode's going down, of course, and this map you do have the Bash and it does give a decent income, but they're going right for it. Want to stop that income from coming in, and that turret packs a punch, but it will die very quickly. It doesn't have quite as much HP as the normal Citadels, and as it goes down, so does the income of Santa Claus. That di did put Zoo and Drago up in the back foot, forced them to retreat to their own tower, or own under construction tower, as they lost a f precious several units, giving Pitcher Hunch and Zoo small advantage, getting this around on top of that. Zoo and Drago going for some defense. The high low ground giving Zoo a, a ranged option, providing the tools to get Pitcher Hunch and Santa Claus off of them. Yeah, now, now Team Ice can head back to the tower, heal up a bit before going in for the next round, but they can't wait too long. The tower is going up, and when the tower goes up, that's going to be a very hard position to break. When the tower goes up, Pidgeon and Santa Claus are going to be depending entirely on those Absolvers built proxy that are only half done. One of them, two of them are in the base. Santa is going for a base trade with those. They don't even want to go in to defend. And Zoo Ooh, and Drago, are they, they are going back. They don't want to have to deal with the Absolvers either. They know their time, their days are numbered up out here. Yeah, well, the tower is still here. It's a small defense, and the unit is stuck, but that won't be enough. Absolvers micro ranked their hearts out, but that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of Zentari coming back for them. The first door already sees Jeb, the next door coming in, and here we go. What wins for Absolvers, or the six Zentari, Zentari know the, know the score no. and lead Zoo, right Zoo away? Doesn't, Zoo does not want to throw Zentari's lives away. No Hallowed Ground needs no ability to contest with Absolvers. A Zentari would just, they'd be dying in the way in. That, however, did buy Pigeon and Santa Claus tons of time in their own base to rebuild. Z Drago applying pressure. The unit advantage far too much in Pigeon and Santa's favor. All oh, those Zapari for Pigeon and Santa cannot be dealt with. Zo Zoo coming back in here. The Zentari range tank does have a shot. It's not finding a whole lot of damage as Pigeon and Santa are just being careful with their positioning. Pigeon getting a solid surround on Drago's forces. Drago able to get just barely escaped thanks to Zoo's help. And now Pigeon and Santa getting way too close to the tower, giving Zoo all the room they need to work with. Absolver providing yeah. enough defense to keep Zoo out from the moat line, but that's it. No further advances. Yeah, a bit of an overextension from Zoo. Need to be careful to Absolvers. And of course, the counterattack is going strong. Zoo getting Absolver of his own. It's going to be two Absolvers versus one, and you don't want to be on the wrong side of that fight. The other side, of course, Zoo and Drago still trying to push forward, but here, it's really a story of how can they defend this. Here come the Absolvers from Zoo to get into position. The Fire Senior providing some good defense, but here come the free Absolvers versus two, and the numbers are in Red's favor. Prompting Sanic to go for the... Let's go for the teleport, getting the units back into a defensive position. Now everything's regrouped here for the, uh, Team Ice. Pigeon Arch has deployed as a Santa Claus. Zoo and Drago looking for some opening here, but nothing is close enough to the Hallowed Ground for the Zentari to get any damage in on the Absolvers. Zapari are all down, Zentari are all that's left. Zoo is the only player on Team Fire still in this fight. Drago forced to rebuild with very little to work with. Here come the Absolvers from Saladin coming back, and yeah, at this point, it looks very dire for Fire. They lost two of their production structures, which are very costly, and they haven't really had a chance to remake them. And just start coming in. Going for the tower. Tower is the last hope here. Top. Empire Unbroken. Sorry. Getting dropped on there on top of the Deliver from Evil. Just enough to provide a little bit extra damage, but no saving that tower. The attack has been completely wiped down. Zoo and Drago desperately trying to rebuild in their main bases. They've got nothing to work with so far. They're rebuilding a soul foundry. Absolvers are great defensively, so maybe they're hoping that they can survive survive the storm a bit longer. Drago about to lose his second Legion Hall, and you know, all, all, all the production structures make such a big difference in this game as that they also double a supply and losing that supply on top of the production structures. That's gonna, that's gonna be gonna a, a huge. That's gonna be so much extra time required for Zoo and Drago to get themselves back on track. 
well, they're going for the super risky play, but you know, that's what you got to do. If you're that far behind, go for a double expand and hope that your opponent just stays back. <laughs> but I don't think Santa and uh, and Pigeon are ready to stay back. No, they're prepped for a counterattack. It's a bit of a shame for Zoo and Drago that Zoo wasn't quite sh wasn't confident they could hold the main base during the initial Absolver attack. Like pulling back the Zentari just that that cracked Team Fire that gave Pigeon and Santa Claus opp ample opportunity to wipe out Drago's force. Then when Zoo came back, wipe out Zoo's force, completely regroup, and now the counterattack is coming at Santa. Santa and Pigeon Wrench. Honestly, just need to get a contain. I mean, do they just and want this to is more than it's a contain, wiping out Zoo's army. Oh, it is fell swoop. Only absolvers left. Pigeon and Santa don't care. They have the opening along the sides. They have they have three ways into this base, and any one of those ways is a possible is a death of a base. Yeah, six absolvers is not something. Heaven's Day just even comes down to help defend against this. The tower's attack will be nullified entirely. Absolver's coming from the back, but that tower is dead. Absolver's sieging up, but that might just be too little too late. As Ice is completely wiping the floor of their opponent, they're coming in little by little, but Drago knows the score, and he's going to call the GG as a zoo. Pigeon and Santa Claus taking game one off of a, off of a resilient defense into a... Into an aggressive counterattack because, well, quite frankly, they needed it. That was solid demonstration of how to hold off early, early proxies. Yeah, I, I do enjoy the players going for, well, you know, just going for that uh, for that tech instead of going for the for the early advantage of the eco, like we've seen a lot. And it seems like maybe with this patch so far, people have been going for a bit more proxies, so they want to play it safe, going for that tech uh, tech advantage, getting that E for as fast as possible. It really paid off for them mm -hmm. here, just not necessarily a build order win, but kind of uh, went for it. It's been going for one base, going for the kind of one base strategy, the one base absolver strategy has become very popular for Kara. It's, it's something that I've... I expect it's part of the reason we are largely seeing Krath be played in the last game. Uh. Aru's been having... Aru players have been having trouble trying to figure out strategies to use to contend with that. I... Also, Santa Claus is normally an Orzum player, which means this is still pretty close. Yeah. We'll see what happens in the later games, if they continue to go with pure Krath or if they change it up a little bit. Pigeon Wrench? Yeah. Okay, we do have options here. Embargo... Either embargo or just a solid defense in the first game, prompting prompting Pigeon and Santa to go completely different with their build, with their opening immortal selection. Yeah, Zo. Well, Zo has seen a lot of power uh, since the last patch. We have lost the use of infuse, which gave a lot of power boost to a lot of early units. Now it's kind of now for Zo, you kind of have a spell that replicates a bit of his effect with the hunting grounds, doubling the first few attacks. So being able to put that down really enhances the power of any attack if you can place in the right spot. So I, I, I've i seen a lot and Santa and Pigeon might be going for some type of push with that. Zoo and the Drago need to be careful against these type of pushes. But we'll see exactly how they want to uh, deal with him. If this is going to be for a fast expand or... Yeah, who knows what they want to go for. Well, we'll see about that, but I think you're right about the hunting grounds. That's... Keep it, like keep an eye out for little red circles in the... Or little blue circles in the ground. That There's, will... Yeah, that'll be there, the clue. There's one advantage of this map in 2v2 still compared to 1v1. You have a backdoor expansion. So you're able to just defend the ramp pretty easily with two towers. So it'll be very hard for you to just break through into the opponent instead of uh, just going in there. Of course, that comes down to whether the players decide to go for the backyard expansion. Oftentimes we see players try to save that for later as a way to keep themselves from losing an economy in the late game. Whether these players decide to go for that riskier strategy of waiting in the backyard expansion or going for it immediately is well, that's a sign of confidence. Yeah, nothing, nothing too uh, too weird so far. Well, I mean, too weird. It, it's been a different path, right? No one really going for fast expand yeah. so far. No, fast expands have become a risky strategy. Yeah, which may be you know, what they should be. You know, that's that having having fast expand be the way to play the game every single time, it, like. Why have fast expand then? It's not a choice. Yeah, no, I, so, I like that. It's I, I like adjustment. the balance of it. I do like the balance of yeah. having okay, you can have fast expand, but for one base still works, and you can deny the fast expand if you do the right thing. 
a bit of a build order gambling, but there's not that much gambling, so you have scouts. So, yeah, right. I'm yeah. curious it's, what it's the direction the... is going to be. It is looking like Pitch Rancher and Santa Claus going for early aggression. They are likely to just get... I want to say likely early pyre, but with Zoo going for this proxy up front, San and Pigeon Wrench, they've got like 15 seconds to go and contest that. Once they scout it out, this is going to be the main battleground, is up front by this tower where Zoo has set themselves up. I mean, this is how this map is set up, right? It's all about that battle in the middle. Later, we'll have that ancient coming out. But for now, it's just uh, the two towers really setting the, setting the ground for those battles. And Zoo, a bit out of position here, gets caught out by those hunters. And that's that's a very expensive loss to begin with. Two Zentari, oh my god. That's and not how you want to start coming this in from Pitch Rush. Drago might be able to escape, but still losing a few of the units in the meantime. Early, early win for Pigeon and Santa as they're coming in strong with good three Bone Stalkers. Be tricky to break through with the tower. But essentially a contain coming through from Team Ice, keeping Zone Drago from advancing beyond this tower. That'll buy Here Pigeon and Santa time to build themselves up. Yeah, they just need those Absolvers out. And once the Absolvers are out, it's going to be so hard to break this position. The zone control units really well, controlling any type of zone that you want to get in. Santa's not done attacking, though. He's coming in, but the Mass Hunters coming from Drago on both sides, getting a bit of a surround here. Absolvers are just out. This was going to be the changing factor in this fight. Trying to go for the snipe, but Pigeon Wrench cannot find it. And that tower is secure. Zoo and Drago, however, dealing with Pigeon and Santa threatening their base. No, Absolver or no, defended tower or no, if you're not getting an economy going, you do not have a shot. But Pigeon oh, and Santa are being the there. They are pushed away. Yeah, you can't go up the ramp on Embargo, that small ramp with two towers defending it. It's just not attackable there. So they head back looking for other places they can do some damage. And I'm not sure they're going to find much at this point. Zoo with his Absolvers has really defended this position well. And with that defense comes the ability to threaten land. Pigeon and Santa feeling confident at the moment that they can hold an expansion. That is that is proving difficult. Santa finding the push on the rocks, but it's not enough. Not enough units are in position. Pigeon is completely unable to help. Santa able to pull back. They can get these Zentari out of position, which they do. Zolvers are able to set up. Main threat here for Pigeon and Santa. If they wipe out these Absolvers, it is going to be a much different fight. It's going to be Pigeon and Santa with the advantage. For now, though, leapfrogging the Absolvers does keep Zoo and Drago safe. Yeah, killing those, uh, those Absolvers is a task easier said than done, though. They're keeping him well protected, but the, the first one is a bit exposed, and they're jumping on it. The first one oh! goes down. Santa losing half of their par har army in the process, trying to keep the uphill battle in their favor. Zoo and Drago up the hill. Keeping going. Zal gets summoned. The Zentari are going down, but Drago continuing to provide supporting fire as Zoo's Absolvers get set up. Pigeon and Sand forced to retreat. Not much tech Drago, built up either. The offering from Drago coming in just the right time as he's able to really take command of this fight. The Bone Stalkers are great at those early game engagements, but once the uh, offering comes online, the, the Mass Hunters really get, get a power of their own. But going up this ramp, is this really what they want to do? They're getting, getting this decimated trying to go up there. Pigeon and Santa do have the defense. They do have the backyard expansion as well. This do, this is an advantage position for Santa and Pigeon simply due to economy for the next minute or two. It's just finding mm. the way to get back in. They Santa's going for thrums. They do have that to get rid of the Azolvers. Drago, Drago's Mass Hunters will be a threat, but Santa's thrums will at least give Zoo's forces pause. Yeah, that's interesting, as in 1v1s, often you get Thrums to stop these Absolver pushes, but now that you have Mass Hunters defending those Absolvers, that's just not going to work, so Santa might might have to go for a counterattack instead. And that's what he goes, going for the opponent's economy, getting it down as fast as possible, and at the same time, getting a, looking for his next tech choice. Often what you want to see is Resonance, as Resonance are just a great uh, great early game disruption, uh, this, uh, this lodger for those uh, Absolvers, so if he can get those up, You'll be able to dis disrupt this a bit, and here we go for Pigeon yeah. exactly Pigeon what I was talking about. Uh, Pigeon's going for that. Santa Claus setting up to go for that a little bit later. Yep, the harass going strong on Zoo's side. He's going to have to defend it on his uh, alloy line. Of course, Dora Tower's defending a bit to the left, so saving most of his moats before they get they get taken out. 
One does go down, it but does that's not too much that... damage. Sure, true. However, given the positions right now, that does put Zoo and uh, does put both teams on even economic footing. Zoo with only oh, yeah. one mining base, meaning that essentially three mining bases per team, plus yeah. the Bastions. So even with great. this contain, Drago and Zoo are not taking advantage. And if Sand and Pigeon can break out of this, it's going to be it's going to be a great position for them. So long as they do it quickly, Drago going for the corner expansion, giving oh, them the that little extra bit of economy. A Drago base, yes. Drago's Drago's signature completely out of the way. You did not see this base. <laughs> yeah, we, Which, we have seen Drago before, haven't we? <laughs> we have seen we Drago before, and this, and should Pitcher Ranch and and Zoo or should Pitcher Ranch and Santa break out of this, it is that extra base does mean Zoo and Drago will have a chance to rebuild quickly enough. To defend their own against a counter attack. Yep. But the breakout attempt coming out here. Santa Claus looking to bait. Trying to pull Zoo and Drago into an ambush, which they are not successful at. Still, the residents are able to set up. They can get set up and then get rid of the Azolvers. That's the key question. Ambush does still come through as Zoo and Drago come to far too close to the Bone Stalkers. One Azolver is getting handled. The ambush. ambush circle is in the exact right position to start taking out this tower. The Absolver is providing a little bit more trouble. Hammer Circle ready. Uh, th those residents are doing such a powerful job just keeping the opponents out of range of their, themselves. And here come the hunting grounds, the abilities used, so they're going to have a double... Sorry? That's what's called, yeah. Hunting grounds. Yeah, yeah, hunting grounds. The big circle. The ambush yeah. circle. Yeah. The ambush I, circle. Yeah, it's a better ambush ambush. Hey, man, it works. It explains it exactly what it is. Oh, Empire Unbroken, and that also explains what it does. This Empire won't be broken here, even though Zoo, residents yeah. attacking in. Zoo holding the line. Again, this buys time for Pigeon, for Zoo and Drago to set up for the, inev the inevitable counterattack. This position cannot hold. It's just a question of how much more can Pigeon and Santa take before their army is forced to pause. Yeah, Absorber at the front doing a bit of damage, doing as much as it can, but it will go down as well. And now we can look a bit at army value. Pigeon so far ahead of his opponents, but of course Drago is no slouch, about equal with him. So as long as he can defend the middle position, Drago is on three bases, Yuzu is on two, and Team Ice is still only on their three bases. They'll need to expand or win with the next push. Worth noting as well, Zoo has gotten for some tier three tech. That's considering how much Pigeon and Sand have been relying on mass bone stalkers, having the Ostrax come from the Sharu could shut that strategy right down. Now on top of the resonance too, the resonance being all nice and and fixed in place. Sharu loved that. It's this is uh, this is gonna be a field day for Zoo if Pigeon Ranch is not immaculate with how they place and move their resonance. Yeah. Oh, going for the tower here, getting a bit of damage of their own. Uh behind us, of course, Drago and Zoo just want to protect their position. Don't need to go into this quite yet. And yeah, Drago moving a bit around, looking for a different angle, maybe? Oh, Frums are coming out. Perfect. Time for his counterattack. Well, counterattack from Drago. We'll find some Aerovores. We'll find some defenses. Pigeon and Santa have prepared for this. Whether they've prepared enough is the bigger question. Picking the bad time to upgrade that Aerovore, meaning the Thrums get complete free reign here. Same time in the center, a battle is happening as the Frums try to get into there. That's a lot of resin just moving slowly before it. And here comes the All Strike. The first resin goes down, second about to fall as well. Pillar of the Heavens comes down right on top of the units. And Zoo and Drago want to win this fight, but that's so many resins to the back. Can they take this? And they struggle to take it. A little bit of blood getting set up for Drago. Might help them out a little. Might help them out later upgrading some of their units. It's not gonna help immediately. More importantly now, Santa and Pigeon have a solid position up front. The Sharu being the main threat here. Pigeon and Santa being careful, making sure they have... They have not fixed their resonance in place. Oh yeah, they, they, he has lost a few resonance who's trying to push in through, trying to get in. And those four resonance from Drago getting all the kills on everything. The Arrow's coming in and gets one of the Sharu. That's an expensive loss for Zoo. As the battle keeps going for the Ancient, whoever gets that gets 50 pyre per player on their team. Adds such a big difference in these fights. As Santa, still 150 power. He has an ultimate ready if he wants. But they're both just going for the Ancient right now. Not really fighting each other. And the Stop the Ostrike! Cut the Ostrike short! 
That's a huge- that means Pitcher and Tristana can just go straight for the Ancient if they want to. I, granted, Drago coming in with reinforcements, able to contest that even further. Those reinforcements gradually going down. Sniping coming around the side. Pitcher Wrench going for the Resonance, off to the side. Setting up Red Harvest, but Drago simply not in a position to make that work. The Ancient may, however, still go to the Team Fire, despite Team Ice's best efforts. Team Fire... get yeah, just one more volley off the Resonance. And oh, there it there is! Whew, that's always an exciting battle, you know, the Ancient. Who, what do you want to attack for? Do you want to attack the Resonance, attack the opponent's army, or go for the Ancient and stop the opponent from getting it? And in the end, like, there were a few Resonant kills from Team Ice, but Fire got got the kill, and their power, power stack is back up there. Well, Pigeon and Santa had some saved up Pyre. At least it'll carry them through for a little while. But it's going into the mid, mid to late game here, where the advantage economically is definitely Team Ice's. The advantage militarily is a bit of a wash, but Drago has been taking full advantage of their extra economy to just get set up. They're getting ready, fully upgraded. Masked Hunters coming around the side to threaten Pigeon Wrench's third. Well, yeah, Pigeon Wrench is natural. Yeah, at this point, it, it just comes down to economy, right? They have a bigger army from getting that earlier economy. And because of that, their army is just that much bigger than their opponents. And Zoo is trying to catch up on that. Uh, I mean, Zoo is trying to catch up with Zoo his Zoo is trying to catch ally. up on that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I expect him to be a bit higher, but yeah. This well, expansion, they, did, they did just lose uh, several tech units. As the expansion is being heavily threatened... Santa, Santa ready for extra Sharu. Santa ready also for the surround with Pigeon Wrench. Looking to trap everything here. Great on dropping as well. There is very little room to escape as Zoo and Drago getting pu pushed up against a wall of Bone Stalkers and Resonance. Do manage to break out though. At some great cost to Pigeon Wrench. A very expensive loss, but, you know, I, I like what they did. I like going for the surround there, trying to get as much value as possible. In the end, it didn't seem to work out. They're still pushing forward, caught a resonant, but... No, this, this, this is this is an impenetrable. This is, this is an impenetrable fortress. You cannot break through it without baiting out your opponent's units. Yeah. yeah like, getting... you're, you're both playing Zul. Baiting out your opponent's units is how you play the game. Especially considering that they're, at this point, behind an economy. As the game goes on further, Drago's just going to pull farther and farther ahead, thanks to their economic lead. Uh, I'm curious what what's the next base they want to take. Is Spidgen still on his one base? Santa getting up to free, though. Is Santa Pigeon? trying to equalize? Oh, I like Pigeon this base. taking the nearby, well, near-ish by 12 o'clock. Just need to kill those rocks. Not sure they have time for that. They I, they do not have time for that. Going going, just stop Zoo and Drago's counteroffensive. But Zoo and Drago could go up north if they wanted to take out that base. They could go... Is it just... Keeping more and more map control as Zoo and Drago build up for another offensive. I'm curious what Unicom's did. Zoo went for a few, went, did go for a few Sharu, but hasn't gone back to them since. Uh, losing them to do, to those two Aerox probably hurt quite a bit in the confidence department. It's like, oh, they die really fast. Don't want to get back into oh, that. Oh, yeah. Well, Drago continuing to set up their... Pretty much solid. I own this location. I mean, both both Orzma Mala are very good immortals for trying for players who want to play an I own this location style of play. Drago's doing exactly that, and Zoo is Zoo not quite as much. They have the tools. They just they've been focusing heavily on move on mobile units with Zentari. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. The oh, I, there will be the ancient coming out again. And do they really want to give it to Team Fire without contesting? I don't think they can. That's not even the question. It's it's the economy. Yeah. Pigeon Wrench looking spots out the omnivore, spots out the base, more importantly. Now Pigeon Wrench and Santa Claus want to go for the base, but they don't want to get surrounded in the process. Holding the line at their own tower, providing a little extra bit of defense, keeping Zoe and Drago off their back. If they take out this expansion, that does put Santa and Drago on an even footing. Zoo looking to take out Santa's little corner expansion though so it's still a slight advantage team fire team ice given a shot to even out the game if nothing else it did you take out that expansion of course the ancient behind us as all the army was somewhere else goes to fire and you can just look at that power count 325 to 2 and 300 230 it is an oh. insane amount and the counter attack comes at the same time yeah the army's completely out of position zoo and drake have no reason not to go for a counter attack here First base goes down without resistance. Santa and Pitcher Wrench are rapidly approaching. 
But this first bait this first natural expansion is completely undefended. Everything else is is gonna be defended in time, but Pigeon Ranch and Santa have to go uphill to get that defense in there into their own base. Zolver up the top of the hill, not able to do much to dissuade Pigeon and Santa from saving them their own their own. Second Absolver getting getting slowed down by the behemoth. So Santa Claus yep, yep. tech choices. Providing them that extra little buffer room. Yeah, just slowing down the opponents as you killed their big expansions again, and Ice is back to their beginning bases. Pigeon has a bit of a hidden base, not really... It's kind of a normal expansion pattern, it's but been, they it's haven't been checked spotted. it. It has been oh, spotted. Man. Yeah, no, some, some Centauri were smacking on it earlier, and now it's just mass Hunters to finish it off. Yeah. But at the same time, the main army is running into trouble. The Behemoth... Only really contested by this one Castigator that cannot do enough damage. The rest of the forces here, the rest of the forces for Zoo and Drago do not have the tools to deal with all these Kittle coming and distracting them. Yeah, the Castigator was uh, very brave. You know, that's something yes. I've heard a lot. Like, someone is brave, it's like, no, that's not that's not a good term, you know? That's yeah, it's very, very British, the British use of the term. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was that Castigator being brave there. And unfortunately, uh, Courage can't win every battle, and not that time. Of course, in the southeast, Drago armored. did win his battle. Hmm? That's an Aru thing, being suicidally brave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this poor Castigator, he didn't understand his job. He was like, oh, no, right, I'm I'm with Kraft, not with Aru. Yeah, I, I stay alive. Or shit. Not I don't this throw time. my life away on heady misadventures. Usually, usually. Just, well, just okay, this yes, that's true. In this case, in this case, they very much did. Which has yeah. put Zoe a bit behind, keeping Drago as the main, the main player to hold the line. Like... This, this game has been a story of Zoo struggling to find a tech path that works and Drago maintaining enough defenses to keep Pigeon and Santa from doing significant damage to the army and therefore significant damage to the bases. Man, we haven't seen Siege Maws in a while, it feels like. And those Siege Maws outrange pretty much everything. I haven't seen Maws in a while. <laughs> that too. But yeah, seeing those well, Siege Maws come Siege Maws are an answer to the mass resonance. Yeah. Hence, hence why Drago has been going for them, but it's the positioning that's not been working out for them. Same time though, Drago and Zoo do have, or Drago particularly, going for yet more towers. So they have taken, they have taken care of every single mid ground tower that Team Ice has. Team Ice has basically no place on the map where they can just be, which means they have oh. no easy way to get Pyre. Which... Oh no, Pigeons, Pigeons base got detected. Pigeons base in the north at, at the twelve o'clock. Oh, position. this, yeah, detected. that, oh, that is going to be. Yeah, that we're day, already that... seeing Pigeon move to try to help defend. They don't see this this small squad of mass hunters go in from Drago. And then it comes back to the story. Do you send your army and perhaps get trapped? No. But okay. Okay. They no, don't Drago, want, they don't Drago want playing that yeah. smart. It's big difference here. Drago, by not sending their whole army, has not really jeopardized their position, much like last time. Like, there's no room for a counterattack here. No, Team, Ice, Team Ice has to try, can maybe save this base, and they do manage to. Losing very little in the process, so the very least, the very least, the day was saved. Yeah. But the damage was still done. Pigeon Ranch still got distracted. Ooh, the roots. Everything's getting rooted out, turned into Kittle, and Drago able to just surround everything here. Pigeon Ranch coming in to try to save the day. Rain of Blood from Drago is going to empower the forces just enough to keep this fight in Team Fire's favor. More roots coming in, and Santa's throwing in the towel. They do not believe any... Pigeon Wrench, last ditch, a holdout. Do they have any options? They seem to think so, but it's looking dire. Yeah, oh, never, never surrender, right? That's that's what we got to do here. The Hallowers coming forward to shoot down the units, but it's a uh, best of seven. They're up one. Yep. Yeah, All right, one. there's the surrender. <laughs> okay, time for some Fool's Bay. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. Okay, I say that. Despite embargo being massively improved recently, at least for one v one, for two v two it's kind of whatever. Like it's like it's always been it's always been what it is. So and I think it's a pretty good map for two v two. Yeah. Well, ever since the ancient got added, and I've really liked it. Just for that engagement that we had, like for that two three minute engagement that they were both attacking the ancient. Like, oh no, I won't let you get it. But at the same time, I can kill your units. Mm -hmm. Oh man, no. I, I think the ancient just adds so much to these matchups. And of course, this time I would have liked them to just kill each other's units a bit more than attacking the ancient. But it was still a great fight going in. Fire had a pretty decent advantage already going into that, so they kept it going and didn't really surrender ground. Well, that's that's how that's how Orson plays. That's a zoo apparently, specifically 
well, with Drago support, like I said, Drago was doing a lot of the hold work. Zoo going a bit more for a tech build, which is an interesting choice considering their immortal picks, but that is that is the nature of the game. You don't have a fixed strategy. Oh, yeah. And that's the beauty of 2v2 is you can have your, your ally just support you in your bad decisions. Like, oh, I'm going to do this. It's like, <laughs> well, okay, yeah, okay. I'm gonna throw Not them necessarily on the bus. a sure. bad decision. <laughs> Fine. I I could have worded it differently, but, you know. You could have. You could, could have. have. But I did not. Nope. Oh, well. They still won the game. It doesn't matter. They did. Yeah, no, it didn't, it didn't actually... Didn't significantly ruin their chances. That early push, oh. that early contain, doing a lot of work, like early contain and the early expansion that Drago took, that gave Zoo and Drago all yeah. the room in the world. To be fair, in that first contain, it also came down to Absolvers coming out really fast, so yeah, the tech really, really served them well there. And now... That's, yeah, that's been the story for any Orzum, or any... Karath game is the absol early absolver setting up for that slow push. Mm -hmm. yeah. So keep an eye on those. Like all the little the the lifesaver like the lifesaver plate spinners, you know? <laughs> they're if they're on the field, then someone's doing something right. I'm quite happy. Like that unit comes in and help because sometimes over tuned, under tuned, maybe players might feel it's a bit over tuned right now, but you know, we're not into balance patches yet. We're just about having finding the fun. And I'm quite quite happy with the fun of Absolvers. At least they're sieged up, they're zone control. You have to get the right positions. They're very powerful, but... Well, they, you they can't have... use them against small numbers of units is the key thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All uh, right. Fool, Fool's Bay. Fool's Bay, a f complete complement of the currently available Immortals mm. across both players. Or across all players, across both teams. Also worth noting, again, another base... Another backyard expansion, which Pigeon Wrench wants to take immediately. I like, this see, not, I like this. Like this is this become this is a much more economic game for Team Ice. Oh, definitely. And how does Fire respond to that? Do you see? Are they also going for economy? Early? Or? No, they want early aggression. Zoo hmm. going for mid ground Legion Hall. Drago. Oh, going for early altar. I mean, obviously, Aru cannot go for early proxies. That's but, just not how they work, but... He did go for E from all, though, so he's not going for the super... You know, the big big build right now is going for two alters at once and not going for any E for and just going for that... For as much... Uh, for getting as much yes. fire to get that hunting ground down. Uh, but you don't need to do that, so... I wonder what Drago's going for for the first E for. I wonder how... Curious how fast he'll take his expansion this time. That's... That remains to be seen. While Zoo, on the other hand, they seem quite satisfied with... Just early Zentari. They will they will move on from there at the same time. Santa Claus also going forward with their first Legion Hall. It's gonna be base defense is going to be tricky for Santa and Pigeon Wrench as Zoo and Drago. Again, they're going this early forward opening. If Zoo keeps it hidden, it will at least be fine. Did they, did they get spotted? Did they get spotted? I doubt it. I think it. they got spotted. I think they did. I think Santa and Pigeon have clued in that yeah, something well is up. Well, in either case, they they could scale the zoo's oh, base yeah. and see there was nothing there. It's like, oh, there's no. No, they they, they spotted it. They they yeah. spotted it. They know. Uh, so from well, here, pigeon, pigeon and sand, if they're able to take out this proxy, there's nothing defending it. Like zoo hasn't set up any tower foundations or anything. This this hill is not going to be hard to break so long as zoo is not able to get free reign in the main base and turn and make everything into mincemeat with his Antari. And he does have the advantage of going for that, for those Absolvers. And since he went for the tech early while his opponents did not, the Absolvers are making such a big difference in the early game that Santa's going to have a really hard time holding on no matter what. And yeah, if you can't uh, if you can't defend, you won't attack. So how they defend this, though? Well, Santa at least able to keep the extra support coming through, but not able to save their base. Zoo and Drago, They've gotten their... They got what they needed. They they took out a base. Like, they don't need to do anything else here. And they know it. Yeah. So do they want safety. to do more? Yeah. Do they want to do more? That's a, that's another question. But so far, no. They're just looking around, trying to make sure their opponents don't expand yeah. somewhere else. But still, three bases well, to yeah. two bases of their opponent. That's still a decent position to be in. Exactly. Advantage position. Actually, advantage position for a pigeon wrench. That's... They still yeah. have... They still have a solid grasp of the game. It's going to come down to... At least the early game is going to come down to what happens with this proxy here. Because Zoo still has that position to work with. They still have... They are still putting threatening pressure on basically everything here. And uh, as long as the Absolver isn't dealt with. Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, 
Now they're working to hold now the line. Yeah, now it's going to be very hard to attack into. Orzum known for being very defensive with those pillars. Uh, well, those citadels that he can unbreak. No, unbreak? He can make unbroken. But, I'm not sure how yeah, to say that. Can... I'm, I'm... Unbreakable. Make unbreakable. Unbreakable. There we go. Words, man. Yeah. Uh, unbreakable eyes. Status. Unbreakable. Oh, there comes a small scout. Sipari sees everything, runs back, and doesn't want to. He wants to attack. Oh, Absolver's not deployed! Up. Absolver's not deployed. It is completely vulnerable, too. Santa Claus going for this round on it. Zola gets summoned by Drago. But the Red Harvest is up for Pigeon Wrench, providing a, a, a retreat. It's a retreat tool. Baiting? Trying to bait Zoo into a bad position. It's not going to happen today. I don't mind Drago sacrificing the Zol. <laughs> That's fine. Use Zol to attack into it, kill a few units, because it's it, at this point it's just a unit that uh, can die. Or times. Well, out. they've been they've been getting a power advantage. Like Zoo and Drago have been holding, having taken them map control to the bank. Drago. Ooh. Speaking of bank, though, Drago coming around to wipe out the alloy line for Pigeon Wrench. Also, they got some ether as well. Taking a ton of damage. Two two symbiotes going immediately. Ether Mog is down as well. But the surround may be coming in your Pigeon Wrench. Got the Icarus on one side, Mass Hunters on the other. These Bone Stalkers are struggling for Drago. Drago not able to hold this at all. Losing a ton in the process. They, this was not value. They were not able to get away with this. Pigeon Wrench on the defense. Yeah, it looks so nice to begin with, but at the end, Drago lost everything. He's now at zero army value. But Zoo has a decent army. He's able to defend a lot of things. The Absolvers come in for Santa, who wants to kill one of his opponent's towers, but no, don't attack. Yeah, Zoo heads back home as soon as he sees those Absolvers siege up. Uh, but the tower at the front, the tower at the back. Zoo kind of surrounds Santa's army, but doesn't want to jump into those Absolvers. Oh, Santa... Santa wants to find the right position, and they do find this Absolver nice and alone. Snipe it out. They got the perfect position to start wiping everything as the Zentario from Zoo looking to go up the high ground, which we know is a bad move, even with the range damage. But with the tower, it is actually enough. Yeah. Santa Claus Think and Pigeon Wrench little... losing their army, trying to wipe out this other tower, breaking themselves oh, against a... the might of Zoo. Oh man, that's a, that's a turnaround and a half right there. Zoo getting, killing those Absolvers very quickly thanks to that hallowed ground given by that tower. Gives him the range to be able to attack it from all corners. Absolvers going down, ah, there's not enough damage damage reduction. Oh, no. oh wow, that's what, oh, that's what Vega was going for. Yeah, going for the, going for the base snipes. Yeah, invisible man. Not to mention, there's in. also just Scepter, because why not? Proxy. Zoo going for a nice little proxy here to add even more damage on the raiding game. Bastion's down. Moatlines are down. These Whitewood Reapers not finding anything to challenge them. So Pitch and Wrench able to finally mount a defense, but the Whitewood Reapers have already taken out two complete alloy lines. Finding more room to cloak on. Can they snipe out this Resonant? Just barely got time. That Resonant is down. Drago with nothing to really stop them. Able to start wiping out everything in their path. Yeah, they're, they're going to need to get another invisibility attack soon. But at the same time, Santa doing the counterattack on the other side. Bastion might just be enough to defend it here. And yeah, Whitewood Reapers oh, it are is. dead. Did not the go cloaked. Did not go cloaked. Counterattack coming in, but Santa knows he's forfeit. He is running back home with him with a deliver from Evo. A few Sipari left behind. Those poor guys will do their best. But Santa has not enough left, and Santa will call the GG here. Like, does Pigeon that Ranch have enough to keep uh -huh. going? Oh, right. No, they do here. not. That was, again, with the the solid push from Zoom. Like, solid yep. set up, hold the middle, and then build out from there. That's been that's been their winning strategy. Yeah, Santa felt the need to surrender there once he saw the Scepters coming in, and he had no anti-air at all. Like, he was completely Absolver Sipari, and then he teleports back to base like, oh, teleporting back into a Scepter. That's not fun. <laughs> and no. was forced to surrender at that point. Yeah, we'll go on to uh, game number four. Did they get to choose their maps this time? We're back to having the full map pool. Except, of course, Frontiers, because... Uh... Yeah, because Frontiers doesn't work. Yeah, unfortunately. But, you know, it. well, we get more maps all the time.
I'm, you know, I, I, I'm quite curious for the next map we're going to get. It's not going to be for a while, I'm guessing. We have three good maps for 2v2, and Frontiers is a little small for it. Uh, we have three good maps and Frontiers. For 2v2. I did I did mention yes, for 2v2. Yeah. Although for 1v1, hey, right, I'm not yeah. sure of Frontiers either. But, you know. No, I've had it's, fun on Frontiers. I've had some fine. fun. It's fine. Yeah. it's it. it well, people like to have... You know, that's something that players have. They, they learn something and they want to redo what they learned. And they're often not ready to experiment with the small size of Frontiers, which, I mean, I want I want to see more experiments on Frontiers, seeing those weird builds come up and any type of rush plate and expansions impossible to take. I want to see what players come up with on the smaller maps. Well, I feel like Embargo's kind of had that dynamic too. Like in 1v1, it's really oh, yeah. hard to hold. Yeah. No, the rush distance is, is insanely small. So I expect that we're gonna be 